No, that's not a barn on a Saskatchewan farm, but a hangar. And it houses the gliding machines of the Saskatoon Soaring Club. 25 to 30 farmers and businessmen who like to sail through the air. The club operates from a farm about 30 miles from Saskatoon, in an area clear of commercial air corridors. After a bit of a tow from an obliging friend in a car or a powered aircraft, these Sunday pilots can make their way across the lone prairie on their own. The sailplane pilot stays aloft by seeking out thermals, that is, rising columns of warm air, and circling in them as long as he can. Once he's got a thermal, he just lets go the tow cable and he's flying. Hopping from one thermal to another, the soaring stubble jumpers travel far, and when they're weary of plane gliding, amaze the groundlings with a dizzying display of aerobatics. The growing use of private planes by Western Canada's farmers for such weekday chores as crop spraying, cattle ranging, and trips to market has created a growing interest in air sports to while away the weekends. And what better way to avoid the traffic and escape the crowds than by flying high in a glider? This quiet stretch of coastline belongs to Cape Breton Highlands National Park in Canada's Atlantic province of Nova Scotia. It's quiet enough now, but when the skirling of pipes and a procession of cars spread over the scene, then creatures of the deep gangway. This is a three-day gathering organized by the Dolphin Skin Diving Club of Cape Breton Island, and it draws over 80 fellow enthusiasts from all over eastern Canada. Temperatures are mild on the beach, but they're none too warm down at the bottom of the ocean. So the divers wear rubber suits which insulate their bodies from the chilly water. While the very young ones watch with envy, their elders strike for the depths to investigate the strange and wonderful world below. Spearfishing was listed among the official events and a trophy was provided for the largest fish caught. Air tanks are strapped on for scuba diving events in which the boys get down to the serious business of bringing home something for supper. Lobsters are out of season, and the game warden may be up on the dock. Crabs, now they're permitted, and they make a tasty dish too.
Well, once the divers shed their underwater overalls and dress up in shore costumes for the evening, there's a get-together to compare club insignia and all the badges of office. Then the whole affair turns into a roaring firelight fiesta. It's always fair weather when skin divers get together. And when the three-day annual outing ends, these submerging summer visitors return to different and probably drier pursuits. Five hundred top-notch paddlers from Nova Scotia to Manitoba gather at Ottawa's Mooney's Bay for the annual Canadian Canoe Championship races. There are trophies galore for the winners in this yearly contest sponsored by the Canadian Canoe Association. Exuberant spectators lining the banks display uninhibited partiality for their favorites as participants in the kayak race streak to the finishing line. The winner in this event upsets a champion of four years standing. His supporters are waiting eagerly on the bank to greet their hero. The main event is a 1500 meter race between war canoes, a sporting spectacle seen nowhere else in the world. With 14 pairs of brawny arms pushing them across the water, the big boats really move. The race always proves an exciting one for the onlookers and an exhausting one for those taking part. By the time they reach the finishing line, they're ready to sit back and watch someone else do it. Now the girls take over to show that without even putting on their war paint, they can outman any man in this war canoe business. They make up in strenuous effort for whatever they may lack in stout muscles and paddle full steam past the enthusiastic cheering section. Finally, the girls stage a contest which leaves the boys completely out of the running. The gallant Canadian lads concede their defeat gracefully. <laughs> 